Welcome to Faint Footsteps World War II, Part 8. In an earlier video, I shared details about my father's time in Scotland while he trained aboard landing crafts in 1942. The work was hard, but while on leave, he enjoyed going into Irvine and visiting with the Cricksmere family at 22 Waterside. He was welcome to enter their home, to bathe, to shave, and share their meals. Doug writes, I know they fed me their rations, even eggs, and I was given a bed for many nights. Before my father and about 100 other Canadian sailors left the urban area, Combined Operations Commander Louis Mountbatten arrived. Commander Mountbatten visited to observe a significant landing exercise, and with him were Prime Minister Churchill and King George VI. The Shuett exercises 1 and 2, held in May 1942, were the largest combined operations involving Canadians to that date. And the King of England is going to observe? I'm all for that. No pressure there, I say. What could possibly go wrong? The late night exercise started under ink black skies. Landing crafts loaded with English soldiers motored toward an offshore rendezvous before assaulting hostile shore defenses. My father, among a Navy crew of four, reports that their landing craft ran aground on a sandbar before the rendezvous. We tried rocking the landing craft in conjunction with the motors. No luck. Officer Coyle ordered Gash Bailey and I overboard to help him look for deeper water. Dad obliged by finding deep water quickly, helped rock the craft free, but before he could scramble back on board, Coyle fumed, we're going to be late. And then Coyle ordered, full steam ahead. Dad says they drove off, leaving me alone in the water. I was scared, but I felt I knew Mr. Coyle. Dad discarded all his clothing except uniform pants, found a sandbar, and waited it out while wondering, how was he going to find me? This is unbelievable. He thrashed his arms and swam on his back for short stints to maintain circulation. And he says, after an eternity, I saw a blinking Aldous lamp. Motors were cut, then revved up, then cut again. Coyle had a fair idea where to locate me, but I don't know how he knew exactly. Eventually, our voices came closer together, and I was rescued after two hours waiting. I felt all in. Dad says he was a lucky fellow. Black skies would have made him seem but a speck on the sea. Nonetheless, he was found, the exercise a success. All's well that ends well. Once the exercise was finished, Lieutenant Coyle, Bailey, and Doug fell into a local pub where they were revived with hot porridge and warm blankets, dry clothes, and rum. My father visited other pubs while in Irvine and couldn't recall the pub's name when writing his memoirs. Royal Sovereign, King George, he writes. But the caption, with the previous old photo attached to my father's story, reveals good details. The Skinners revived Doug Harrison. But are they true? Yes, they are. When in Irvine, I learned the present owners purchased the pub from the Skinner family. That was a lovely night. So it's true, Lieutenant Coyle and his crew had to scramble and tread water during an important exercise made more serious by the King of England's watchful presence. But at the end of it all, they landed safely in the King's arms, and the touch of rum likely didn't hurt either. <laughs>